All right, welcome back to the Tom Reefer Studio, guys. Here's the 20 gallon mixed reef cube. And here's the 3.5 gallon Pico. And the six gallon tall over there. And here is the 10 gallon peninsula. And today we got water change Wednesday and it's all gonna happen right here, guys. Nothing fancy today, guys, except it's water change Wednesday. One of the guys, a couple weeks ago, when they saw that I played drums, asked if I would sing. It's water change Wednesday. So that's why I play drums, guys. All right, so before we get into it, new viewers, water change Wednesday is a question and answer format. You ask a question out below the video in the comments section, and I'll answer it there, and then I try to answer it here. All right, so let's get right into Water Change Wednesday. My reefer green on again today, guys. I like reefer green and black, don't you? Here's the first question. This is a tough one, even for Tom Reefer, because I haven't kept this fish. TJ asks, he recently bought a two-spot goby. He felt like he's a newbie and he made the mistake because he's reading about how hard it is to keep those fish. He's got a one-inch sand bed and he's reading that it may die soon. He's got a 20-gallon tank and it's seven months old and he wants to know if there's any tips for success so he can keep this fish alive. That's a tough one, guys. Fish questions are tough for me, you know, because every fish reacts differently in a tank. What I recommended to him is to try some of these slow-sinking pellets that I put in my tank. My goby isn't a sand sifter. They dig in the sand and they collect the food out of the sand through their gills. It's very possible you can get him to eat, especially if it's something that sinks to the bottom and will stay there. So Sustainable Aquatics makes a 0.5 millimeter and a 0.8 millimeter, and I think they even get higher. It's a slow sinking pellet. It's really quality food, and they use it for their breeding there in their tanks. And I've fed my fish that for a while now, along with some frozen, but my goby, all my fish go nuts for that. It's really small, but it slowly sinks to the bottom. So what you might want to try, TJ, is that's sold on Amazon. Try a 0.8 millimeter. You mix it with a little tank water and you pour it in. Turn your flow pumps off for a minute so it can sink down before it goes into your overflow. And it's very possible that will sink to the bottom and kind of get in his vision and view. And if he eats it once or twice, he's going to like it. So give that a try. And if there's anyone else out there that may want to offer some suggestions, if you know about this two-spot goby, you can add pods, guys, but, you know, pods don't last forever. And he'll be putting them in all the time. And, you know, an older tank may grow a lot of stuff in the sand over time, but seven months old is not that I also wanted to talk real quickly about last Sunday's reef tanks around the world. It really worked out well. Don't be upset with me if I send some information back to you. For example, today I wanted to show you a little bit about how to get the best color out of your reef tank. All right, obviously you can't send something like this, guys. It's too bright, right? So what I do is I tone it down. Now, if I go too dark, what I'm doing right now, I have iPhone, it's in 4K, 
and I'm lowering this. See, this is getting too dark. See how you don't see everything is dark in between the rock? So you kind of find a medium point where it's not too white, and there you go. But let me show you what happens if you have too much blue light over your tank. Annie's Fanny asked me what my lighting hours were or photo period with the Kessel A80 over the six gallon and the percentage. Uh, and we had a correspondence back and forth. Mine does not have the controller set on it. So I've said this before, I set mine now there at the intensity is at three o'clock and the color is at about two o'clock. Now I'm on my iPad, so I'm going in on the setting, the soul, and I'm in the lighting section. Now, right now I have my standard lighting, which is 60% cool white, 35% royal blue, and 40% blue. Now, if I have too much blue, I can see my greens, I can see a little bit of the pink, but that's completely different than the way I had it before, which is like that. So make sure that your color is not too blue and you get that by lowering your blue levels down. I just wanted to follow up too. Alvaro made a comment to Corey about the clownfish he had. They were really cool, the Wyoming whites are a very cool clownfish. It's funny, when I started in the hobby, there was just orange and white. There was none of this other stuff. That all came after. So it's really cool to see the crossbreeding and all the genetics and all the different types of clowns they have now. So very cool and very cool tank. Steven asks, question for Water Change Wednesday. Coraline algae, friend or foe? What say you? Will coralline algae outcompete nuisance algae or diatoms? Jeez, I feel like I'm answering this one. If I did, sorry guys, I don't remember. Anyway, coralline algae is great to have. If you, I answered this two days ago though. That was after Wednesday. Did he ask it twice? Hold on. All right, I don't know. I tried to look back to see if I can... All right, Stephen. No, um, coralline algae is a friend, but it doesn't necessarily outcompete nuisance algae. What happens is it makes it more difficult for particularly hair algae to grow on it. It just doesn't seem to attach on the coralline. What I told him is try to seed your tank with some coralline algae. If you can get some from an LFS, like a live rock with some on it, or one of your other tanks, or you know, if your live rock has it on it. Sometimes uh, snails and hermits have it on their shells. Anywhere it is, if you put it in your tank over time, it'll grow. I answered this question. Yeah, it's a good thing. Try it. You can't, you'd be waiting around a long time. I, come on, Steven. That was, you must have asked that a month ago, maybe. I don't know. All right. So it's a good thing. Try to get it to grow. And it doesn't outcompete, but it makes it more difficult for unwanted algae to grow on it. I think I'm losing it, guys. You know what's happening. I'm confusing what I respond to you in a video. So I'm thinking because I've responded to you out there in your question that I think I've talked about it already. So forgive me if I repeat or if I just seem insane. It's really simple. You just tone down your blue light and you increase your cool white, that'll make it a warmer color and you'll see more of your yellows, your reds. You know, you just see more color. I would do that to present. All right, guys. So there it is. That's how you do it. Try your best and we'll get you on the Tom Reefer channel. My macro algae died, guys, right down here in the 10. My calerpa died. I have no clue what happened. See, it was thriving.
Remember this video when I showed you how much it was growing? All right, so here it is, guys. Here's the 10 gallon peninsula. And the last week, it just slowly dwindled and withered away to nothing. So it's gone now. It's not even in my tank anymore. Oh, well. Fabrizio, I just saw this now. You must have just sent it two hours ago. I didn't get to see it. And it looks like he is writing it in Portuguese. And I can't respond to it. It's something about bacteria and bacterial bloom. So I'll answer that next Wednesday, but I'll answer it here for you after the video here and I'll give you an answer. I'll look up the translation and see what you're saying. Something about bacteria. All right, Miguel asks, hey Tom, loving the channel. Thanks, Miguel. I have a 24 gallon nano cube, which I'm trying to bring back to life since it was neglected for roughly six months. We've all been there. I was there once on my 55 gallon, not six months. I neglected it for about a month or so and forget about it. I can't even tell you what I had to do. Take the rocks out, scrub off all the hair algae that grew on it. Anyway, back to the question. I've been consistently doing water changes for the past two months now, 25% weekly. Let me interrupt right now. A neglected tank, 25% weekly is not enough, Miguel. You got to do minimum of 50%. And before I even get any further, if you had lots of hair algae in there, you're going to have to probably either take your rock out or get in there manually and scrub it all off. You know, you might, might even want to do a 75 to 100% water change. Uh, he's been doing 25% water changes weekly and can't seem to lower nitrate. So that's why you need larger water changes. I recently did, oh, to 50% and still have over 40 parts per million nitrate level. Any suggestion? 40 parts per million is not killer high. It is high, yes. I'm not saying it's not high but it's not killer high. So what I would recommend, Miguel, vacuum your sand bed. Get in there and suck all the gray stuff out of your sand bed. Take that out during a water change. It may take a few months to get it back and lower that down. Give me a little more detail of what you have in that tank and I'll answer it to next week. All right, that should do it for today, guys. I can only tell by how many questions I answered, how long I'm behind this camera. I think it should be enough. Uh, I believe we will have a tank for Sunday, so I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that I get enough of the video together to be able to put that out for Sunday. All right, so have a great rest of the night, and I'll see you Sunday. Take care now.